Hello everyone, welcome back to another uh, Ross Q&A video here at The Construct. My name is Rodrigo and uh, today I'm going to be showing you something really simple but very useful and it's how to uh, do launch files with an XML format in ROS2. Uh, so now I know a lot of people have noticed the change between ROS1 and ROS2 in which ROS2 the sort of default uh, version of launch files, the ones that you start out with when you start learning, are Python files. So they have an extension .launch.py and um, this allows you for greater flexibility, like to go more in depth um, to be able to modify things in uh, launch files. But sometimes, at least for me personally, it's just overly complicated and I just want it to keep it simple and um, I, there's a way to do this with XML which is very pretty much the same as uh, ROS1 so I'm going to show you how you can do that with um, with an XML file so you don't have to spend time trying to figure out whether or not your launch Python file is correct you can uh, test things quicker that way alright so let's do it so uh, I'm going to go over to the constructsim.com. So let me just go in it again. And um, if you don't have an account, you can just create one really quick. Or if you do, you can just log in. And over here, we're going to use a Rostject. So you go to my Rostjects here. And we're going to use the Turtlebot 3 sandbox. Uh, this Rostject I will um, share with you guys. This is a public Rostject, so this has the simulation for uh, the Turtlebot 3, so it's installed already, so you don't have to worry about anything. And we're gonna just use this. So we're gonna click and run, and um, this should open up quick uh, in a little bit. So in the meantime, let me just take you to the Construct Sim and tell you about our courses. We have over 50 robotics courses uh, from ROS2 and also ROS1 if you want. Uh, and for things like ROS beginners, so if you don't know how to code, uh, all the way to machine learning, robot navigation. Uh, and we're uh, now focusing heavily on ROS2 because it's going to be the norm from now on. So check it out, you guys. Okay, now we're going to go back to uh, our ROS check. Here, let me get my face in here real quick. Oh, sorry. So this is our ROS check right here. And uh, for one of the videos last month, um, I worked on a, on a node for, uh, doing an action server uh, for the TurtleBot 3 simulation in which you would run a server that when called with a specific radius, the TurtleBot you know, would go around in a circle. Uh, so what we're going to do is just mix, uh, put that node, which is really simple, putting this node, like a Python node, and um, the simulation launch file, which is a Python, which is something I want to tell you, that you can put in other types of launch files in this uh, XML launch file. So we're just going to launch the simulation and the action server, so they'll launch together. That way uh, you don't have to put figure out how to transform your node into a, the launch Python and just it just takes a long time at least for me so I'm going to show you how to do that so basically what we're going to do is open up our IDE right here okay and let me just close this this is the action server I'm telling you about I'll put the description of this link and, and how to create this action server uh, which is called patrol action server um, it's already in the workspace in the ROS2 workspace uh, so check that video out uh, and what we're going to do so right here you see we have another TurtleBot 3 workspace this just contains the packages required to launch the TurboBot 3 simulation. And if you see over here, you have a TurboBot 3 simulation, TurboBot 3 gazebo, and then we have this one that we always launch, I mean, at least I always launch for testing, which is the TurboBot 3 world.launch.py. So this is a, a Python launch file. So if we go in, this is what I'm talking about. 
you know, it's um, sometimes it takes time to get used to this formatting. So if you just want to put together a quick launch file to launch things together, this is how I do it, right? So uh, we're going to just create a new file and we can call it the same title about three world and we can say action server so uh, we know it's launching that dot launch and then dot XML and over here I mean if you've worked with ROS one it's just so much easier so um, we can just start a launch bracket and close it over here and within here we're just gonna put uh, those two things I was talking about so first we're gonna put this turtle about three underscore world and for that we just have to include it so if we do um, like so we can do include file and then this is one of the first things that is different for um, ROS2 is just this command to find the package once you've sourced everything correctly. Uh, the command is find dash package abbreviated and then share. And then obviously, well not obviously, but um, you'll see here that the package is called turtlebot 3 gazebo. So let's do that. And then we close it and then it's in the launch folder as you can see on the left here it's turbo 3 gazebo launch and the name of the launch file which can be a python file which is great so like so all right and then so we've included this so now we can include the node i was telling you about so this we will uh, create it like this so node package usually you have to put the package the executable and then the name and then the package we know that is the patrol action server Yes, then um, the executable, which is exec, uh, I always name it the same name of the node, but uh, and the um, with the exe prefix, which should be in this setup.py. See right here. So this is the name of the executable for that node. So let's paste that in there. And then the name, I guess this is a suffix, so I'm sorry, you guys. Then the name is going to be the same thing without the exec. We can just paste this and delete it. And um, we'll just uh, close our bracket, so like so. And then we can, this is another way you can do it. Just make sure you do it either like this, close in like this, or just node and node like that. All right. So that's it. That's pretty much it. So let me sh first. Well, no, I'm going to show you uh, the the full on process here. So uh, let's make sure we compile our TurtleBot three workspace. All right, and then we source it, install setup.bash, and we're going to launch that file. So you can see here our new launch file, which will include this one and the action server that I talked about. So, oh, 
I forgot to specify the Torba 3 model. This is uh, an environment setting. So here you can see that we are launching the patrol action server and gazebo and the robot state publisher to take care of the simulation. So we can see the the simulation right here. And if we, let's say, look for our actions, no, our nodes, rust to node list, we can see that the patrol action server that we included here is uh, included. So that's basically it. That's the main benefit. Uh, whether you want to do like, like this or keep it with your Python is your choice. But I mean, for me, this is just much simpler than having to look at something like this, you know? I mean, sure, sometimes you will need it to do like this because you want to take advantage of the Python um, launch system. But um, for me, for testing, this is way better, way quicker, and I don't forget how to do things like this. Um, so, I mean, we should be able to call that action so uh, you can send it with Rust2 actions and goal. I think the name was patrol. Yes, and then you can just hit tab to autocomplete. Let's just, let's do it with feedback. Let's put it over here. I like feedback. Oh, I think I have to do it again. You input the radius. So let's say we want a radius, a small radius of 0 0.5. You call the action, and that uh, Turtlebot should do a what the action server is telling it. So that's pretty much it. Oh, one thing. Uh, say you want to include arguments. Uh, it's the same thing. It works the same way. So you would do something like this arg name, let's say, I mean, for gazebo, we use the use sim time a lot. So let's say that and I mean, we could say that the default is true. That and then to call it, let's say we want to call it within uh, the simulation here. I mean, we would need to sort of do something like this here first. See, like, I just remember from Ross one, so it's a, a lot easier here. Uh, and then in here, the thing that is different is how to call it. So you would do, uh, I mean, the use in time. And then the value, uh, now you, you do it like so, uh, you say var, and then use sim time. I forget what it was before, but now it's, uh, instead of this was another uh, variable, but now it's uh, var. So that's pretty much what you would, what you would do. And yeah, those are the two main different things. Uh, so it's, I think this way is a lot, let me just get my face over here, sorry. This, this method is just a lot simpler when you're trying things, when you wanna put, throw notes together really quickly and you just don't wanna spend time uh, in launch files. This is a great way to go around it and uh, I haven't seen it used a lot, so I just wanted to let you know that you can still do this and, uh, you know, simple things aren't always necessarily a bad thing, especially when you're testing. So yeah, this is pretty much how you do XML launch files, really simple. And uh, let me know what you guys think. I will put the Rostjet descriptions down below. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification button. And uh, we will be having... Um, many events in the upcoming months, for example, the Roth Developers Day. So I'll also put the link down here where we have a full day of conferences 
regarding ROS2 and what's being developed, which will be really exciting, uh, really cool. So make sure you guys uh, take a look and just uh, take, go through our website and look at our courses and see if something interests you. So um, again, we'll see you guys in uh, next in next two in the next two weeks. So um, I hope to see you guys again soon. So I'm logging off. So bye bye, you guys.